Hello, friends. Uh, today, uh, the theme of my video is blue. Uh, it's not just because of the dark blue curtains behind me or the Sonics Blues T-shirt that I'm wearing. Uh, what a shame they uh, stopped. And uh, hopefully one day they'll be back, but who knows? Um, uh, it's also, I've got a blue book here, uh, written in Japan, Biographical Portraits. Uh, edited by Sir Hugh Cortazzi. Now, I contributed one chapter to this, but it's not that chapter that I'm interested in today. Um, I'm interested in uh, chapter three, uh, which is about Prince and Princess Chichibu by Dorothy Britton, uh, Lady Bouchier, uh, whom I met on May the 24th, 2005, just the once when we were launching this book, uh, all the authors in Japan were uh, gathered together to launch the book. Uh, okay, so um, why do I want to talk about Prince Chichibu? Uh, it's related to the fact that uh, Chichibu no Miya uh, Stadium is to be uh, uprooted, destroyed, if you will, uh, and the, there's going to be a new rugby facility, which is basically a large uh, box, I, I mean, it's sort of an indoor facility uh, for indoor rugby uh, in another part of the Meiji Jingu Gaien Park in central Tokyo. Um, so uh, I'm, I would like, I'm not terribly happy about this, as I think I've said on several occasions. Um, and uh, the loss of the name of Prince Chichibu also, I think, is, is regrettable. I'm going to try and explain uh, using this chapter from the book. Uh, yeah. Um, exactly why I think that. All right. So um, this is uh, a book of biographical portraits. And uh, as authors, we were asked to write uh, around 5,000 words in English about our subjects. And uh, so Dorothy Britton, Lady Boucher did that. Um, We've got a, a photograph of the prince and princess taking tea at their villa in Gotemba uh, there on the front page there. Can you see that? Uh, and I'll just read a bit of it. Um, I'll try, I'll probably skip parts of it because uh, uh, if I read everything, it'll take a bit, a bit of time. I have done that with my, my chapter, which is about Suimatsu Kencho. Anyway, here we go. Uh, upbringing, Prince Chichibu Yasuhito, loved every moment of the time he spent, brief as it was, at Magdalen College, Oxford. So much so that when he had to return prematurely to Japan because of the illness of his father, the Emperor Taisho, in 1926, he had a study made at his palace in Tokyo, which was an, as exact a replica as possible of his beloved study at Magdalen. The prince was only there for one term, reading history, politics, and economics, but he had already been in England over a year studying English, going to the cinema, shopping, visiting Switzerland, where he climbed the Matterhorn and thoroughly enjoying himself. When the prince later became an invalid just before the outbreak of World War II and was forced to spend the rest of his life a long way from Tokyo in the bracing air of the foothills of Mount Fuji, the prince made sure that his study there was also arranged exactly like his one at Oxford. An English rose garden, too, graces the Gotem Gotemba Villa, which is now open to the public. Prince Chichibu brought several skulls back to Japan from England to remind him of happy times on the Thames and the River Chowell. Uh, he kept the boats in a shed on the beach near his Hayama Villa, and as a child I used to watch him rowing out to sea past my house on halcyon days when it was sufficiently calm. Okay, I'll skip a bit here. Um, prince, uh, prince Chichibu, known as the sports prince, loved all sports except boxing. I don't much like boxing either. <laughs> That's by the by. Um, he was particularly fond of mountaineering and skiing, and he learned to like rugby football in England, although he could not take part on the field because of his need to wear glasses. Hmm, I wonder about that. I mean, I wear glasses. A lot of people do wear glasses, I suppose it depends on 
the level of short-sightedness or whatever. Um, he introduced the game to Japan where it boasts a stadium of its own named after the Prince. That's the one I've been talking about. Uh, he also introduced squash and had a court built at his palace in Tokyo. This was modeled after the squash court at the British Embassy. When the Oxford University rugby team came to Japan in 1952, and by the way, it was the first after the war, and played against Keio University in Tokyo, Prince Chichibu attended the match in spite of his poor health. After going down to the field to greet the players, the climb back up the steps to the Royal Box exhausted him. Four months later, he was dead. Uh, in her autobiography, The Silver Drum, the princess wrote, it was evident to me then how deep was his nostalgia for the Oxford of his interrupted studies, to which he was never able to return. So uh, it goes on about the seeds of his Anglophile attitude. Uh, the seeds of, his, of the prince's Anglophile attitude appear to have been sown early. Imperial offspring in those days were traditionally removed from their parents' care 70 days after birth and reared in the family of a suitable no nobleman until they were five. Uh, the retired Admiral Count Kawamura was chosen as his foster father. Uh, and anyway, he, he, he got an English governess called Miss Ethel Howard. Um, so, yeah. Stuff about his school days at Gakshuin, the Pierce School. Um, and uh, Prince Chichibu's elder brother, Hirohito, when he had become crown prince on his father's accession to the throne in 1912, returned home from his official world tour in 1921 with a portrait of himself by Augustus John and glowing accounts of life in Britain. So that was uh, probably what interested uh, uh, his brother, uh, Yasuhito, uh, in England. Um, Hirohito was much taken with British democracy and it envied the freedom of Edward, Prince of Wales, to do such things as go to the theatre, eat in restaurants and mix with friends on an equal basis. Next uh, is a discussion of um, Prince Chichibu in the army uh, and uh, Mm. Prince Chichibu, similarly impressed with life in Britain after his Oxford experience, was able more easily to try out his egalitarian leanings on his fellow army officers at the military academy and later the war college. He too enjoined them not to think of him as a prince and to treat him as just like any other fellow officer. He was naturally gregarious and enjoyed chatting with everyone with friendly ease. The following story is typical of his selfless consideration and friendliness. I think I'll skip that story. I, I will skip quite a lot here, um, simply for reasons of time. Uh, uh, but this part uh, leapt out at me. Um, so he entered the War College uh, on the 24th of December, 1928 three months after marrying uh, Setsuko, Princess Chichibu. Uh, making friends with his officers and men, the altruistic prince became deeply concerned about the poverty, malnutrition, and economic distress among the working class at that time. He was a kind and sympathetic listener, which encouraged them to air their grievances. In many of the officers' published diaries in which these conversations were mentioned, he does not seem to have said a great deal, but just nodded in wholehearted agreement to their ideas. Um, so there, there was a book written by Kita Ikki, General Outline for the Reorganization of Japan, written in 1919. Um, and it advocated a coup d'etat uh, carried out by the emperor and the people against the privileged ruling class. Uh, Prince Chichibu read Kita's book and was interested in the ideas for ameliorating the lot of the working class. So many of the recruits he had trained came from poor homes. He was appalled at the number of people living in wretched conditions so different from his own. But in his position, there was little in a practical way that he could actually do to help them. Uh, it was rather like Edward VIII when Prince of Wales, who saw the plight of the Welsh miners, 
and famously declared, something must be done. Um, so, uh, there were there were several um, coups or uprisings uh, in the army, uh, and uh, Prince Chichibu tended to be on the side of the the soldiers. Um, he wanted he wanted his brother to be the people's emperor. And he went and uh, had a row with the emperor about this, harangued him. Um, just a bit further on, we get Prince Chichibu and the attempted coup d'etat. On the 15th of May, 1932, after two failed attempts to overthrow the government the previous year, a group of young naval officers and army cadets managed to assassinate Prime Minister Inukai. The prince had no previous knowledge of the uprising and naturally did not condone the killing but he did understand the rebels' grievances. He immediately went to the palace and tried once again to make his brother, the emperor, understand the reasons behind the unrest, but these harangues did nothing but cause the emperor to grimace with painful anguish and created a temporary rift between them. When the most serious coup d'etat, the 26th February 1936 incident took place, Prince Chichibu was in Hirosaki in the north of Japan's main island of Honshu when she had been posted the year before as a battalion commander of the 3rd Regiment. It was very possibly to distance him from the radicals in view of their misgivings beginning to be entertained about him more and more by the emperor and courtiers like Sionji and Kido. So he was sort of mistrusted because he tended to take the side of the soldiers. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, News of the rebellion did not reach Hirosaki until the afternoon, but a 7 a.m. phone call from his brother, his younger brother, Prince Takamatsu, informed Prince Chichibu of the coup, although his brother did not have all the details. Um, so anyway, uh, Chichibu caught the train back to Tokyo. It took 14 hours. Uh, on arrival uh, at 4.59 p.m. on the 27th of February, he went straight to the palace, where, according to Kido's diary, he first saw Prince Takamatsu and then spent two and a half hours alone with the emperor from 6 to 8.30, after which they dined together, joined by their mother, the Empress Dowager. There is no record of the conversation, but Prince Chichibu had obviously realized it was a time of crisis for the imperial family, and he and the emperor pledged their determination to stand firm together. Prince Chichibu clearly had only two alternatives, to apologize for the actions of members of his former regiment and put himself at his brother's disposal, or to try again to persuade the emperor to see the rebels' point of view. This time, he unhesitatingly chose the former. It was a decision he had made before getting on the train. As the princess wrote, he could not condone the act of the rebel officers in using national military forces to try to further their own ideas killing and injuring a large number of people in the process. Prince Chichibu's support was a great relief to the emperor. Uh, he said afterwards to Kido Koichi, secretary to the Lord Keeper of the Privy Seal, Prince Chichibu has behaved much better than he did at the time of the May the 15th incident. Okay. Um, so the insurrection was crushed and the family, well, the family came came together. Um, in 1937, the year following the incident, Prince and Princess Chichibu went to England to represent the Emperor and Empress at the coronation of King George VI. It was a happy visit for them both. The Princess wrote, we were always given precedence over the representatives of other nations. The extraordinarily Extraordinary friendliness expressed to us by the British royal family was quite remarkable. World feeling towards Japan was not especially cordial. That the royal family should have treated us so warmly at such a time touched us deeply. Uh, they returned with remnants of the resp respiratory infections, which had forced them to cancel part of their intended visit to Europe. And the prince could not get rid of his persistent cough. Uh, then he was promoted to colonel. And he was sent on a long tour of duty to Manchuria, 
including all night observations of battles from the bridge of a cruiser. He drove himself hard in spite of continued ill health and finally sub succumbed to tuberculosis, the real cause of which his wife maintained lay in the strain he constantly subjected himself to as he strove to carry out both his imperial duties and his military duties with a high degree of excellence. Uh, the imperial duty Prince Chichibu enjoyed most was probably being honorary patron of the Japan British Society in Tokyo. With a special affection for Britain, it must have delighted him to be asked to do so in January 1928, the year after his return from Oxford. During his illness and later convalescence in Gotemba, he was often represented by the princess. She took over the honorary patronage until his death, uh, on his death, sorry, in 1953. Um, when the war was over and he had regained some of his strength, Prince Chichibu realized a long time dream of living the life of an English country gentleman. The Chichibus set up a farm on their Gotemba estate along English lines to help with the food shortage. He also took up writing, contributing a series of essays entitled Diary of a Convalescent to a health magazine, as well as publishing two books, Recollections of Life in England and America, by them both, and Gotemba Thoughts, in which he expounded the opening up of the monarchy and aired bold opinions never before expressed by a member of the imperial family. He wanted Japan to hurry up and become a modern people with a true understanding of rights and obligations. He would have rejoiced to see the many democratic reforms, internationalization and prosperity of Japan today, a far cry from the ruin he had predicted as a result of breaking off friendlier relations with England and America. Uh, uh, Princess Chichibu um, carried on promoting Anglo-Japanese friendship. Uh, okay, so there was a short paragraph about her at the end. Um, so anyway, um, it seems to me that uh, some some people in some quarters have decided to uh, uh, blacken the prince's name. Uh, they say that he did terrible things during the war, etc. Um, there's, there's at least one sensational history book which seems to claim such a thing. Uh, I'm not going to give it the dignity of, uh, or the oxygen of publicity here. Um, but it uh, seems to me that uh, Prince Chichibu was a, a, a gentleman, is uh, a man who um, cared a lot about the common people of Japan. And uh, I can't help feeling that um, uh, his name must not be lost to history. Um, it, it was on the stadium because he loved rugby, we know that. Uh, okay, he didn't play it himself, but uh, I think um, uh, this brief portrait, all right, it's bound to be sympathetic. It's by, <laughs> excuse me, somebody who knew him personally. But um, I think it would be very sad and I would feel blue if uh, his name was lost from uh, from the rugby stadium, which uh, at any rate, I would like to stay where it is. Um, although perhaps plans are too far advanced in the direction of uh, moving away and replacing the rugby stadium with a new baseball stadium. And uh, then the rugby will become a, uh, a smaller part of the Meiji Gaian, and it will become an indoor facility available for concerts only, uh, uh, concerts as well as rugby, sorry. Okay, well, that's about it for today. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and I hope you found, uh, you learned something about uh, Prince Chichibu. And uh, I certainly did as well. Thank you very much. See you later.